Good evening, YouTube. Tired Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Hopefully, you guys are warm. We have a uh, we are having a situation where uh, snow is beginning to fall around the center part of the U.S. Here, the cold temperatures have moved in, but business is only going going to be uh, picking up from here. So we're having to keep an eye on a lot of different things here: blizzard conditions, meso outlooks, severe weather potential, albeit very limited. I'm not even I don't even know if it would even be worth talking about at this point because I'm sure everyone wants to know the time frame in which a those uh record cold wind chills and uh just temperatures alone will be uh coming into their areas and then uh who's going to see snow who's not and a whole bunch of other stuff so we're just going to go ahead and get into it then We'll start out actually by looking at this meso discussion here, and this meso discussion is actually concerning a blizzard. We're going to go ahead and actually click on this reduce visibility and blowing snow, localized ground blizzard, blizzard conditions expect are possible, most likely expected over the overnight hours. We're going to monitor the winds mainly over this area in just a moment, but we're just getting an idea of what's going on here. Winds are going to winds with the uh, Winter Storm Elliot are going to be pretty intense, so this doesn't surprise me. Whoops. And this is the only meso discussion that we have going on at this time. I do expect the number of uh, meso discussion reports to be on the rise here, so be on the lookout for that if you're into the uh, really uh, nerdy stuff as far as weather is concerned. Other than that, let's go ahead and take a look at the... Uh, warning and advisory map as you can see here these little orange areas these are our blizzard warnings these have increased these have increased in coverage now we have uh, parts of southern minnesota in there as well we have uh, half of iowa in there as well and i do think that's going to actually increase if anything we may even have to watch wisconsin but that uh eastern part of the great lakes has a uh, new one has new um blizzard warnings of course winter storm warnings have also increased in coverage along with our wind chill watches our wind chill warnings have begun to expand and wind chill advisories are now in effect along with mass numbers of hard freeze watches and warnings so uh, things are starting to unfold as we draw closer to this event here so we're gonna have to just uh we're just gonna have to watch everything unfold at this point it's not too much more I can really talk about here other than the simple fact of we know what's coming. I feel like myself, any other uh, or any other weather YouTuber or anyone on uh, the local news network has tried to prepare people as best as they could. So that being said, let's just get one last timeline here before things really start to unfold. We already know that uh, the northern tier of the U.S., especially towards the uh, northern Great Plains, is going to be already within these uh, brutal uh, wind chill indexes. But overnight tonight, this one will start to see this get into the central plains and even into the southern plains heading into tomorrow morning. We'll move this up to about 060. This is about maybe 1, 2 in the morning my time, so this is about midnight. We're starting to see that stretching into uh, Kansas here. And then once we get to about 7 in the morning or 6 o'clock central time, that's when we'll start to see uh, these uh, below zero wind chills working their way into Oklahoma. And by the time we get into noon tomorrow when this cold front comes in, we also will see that stretching its way into, into Texas here. And look at the contrast. Some areas I've heard of even are even expecting a, a 40 degree drop in temperature within 30 minutes. That's unheard of. That's why people are off. And that's why a lot of the officials are saying you don't want to be outside in this. If, if you don't have to be out, just don't. Like honestly, just don't. We'll run this forward to uh, OOZ, which would be actually, which would be. Uh, let's say maybe five or six o'clock this time, central time, I would say. And even towards uh, far southern Texas, towards the Mexico border, even we're starting to get into those single digits now. 
have Dallas at five, which is insane. And then once we get into the overnight on Thursday and heading into Friday, this is where we get into the eastern half of the country here. This is looking towards 7 a.m. Eastern Nashville. You're at a negative 11 wind chill, which is crazy. This will be around the time I would be uh, on the way to work. Wind chill would be 12 degrees in Atlanta. Yikes. Birmingham, you have a, a wind chill of 4. And, jeez, just, it's just, just crazy to watch it. I think that, uh, oh wow, and then I move this to, uh, no, actually this would be 7 a.m., excuse me. I'm going out in a wind chill of negative four, possibly. That's crazy. Tennessee, by 7 a.m. Friday, you have a wind chill of negative 17. Louisville, you have a negative, you have a wind chill of negative 29. Good grief. And I don't even want to start talking about these areas over here. Des Moines, we could be dealing with wind chills in the negative 30s. And uh, Chicago's dealing with a wind chill of negative 31 by by a 6 a.m. their time. Good grief. It's mind-blowing to see this. It truly is. And throughout the day, these wind chills just don't go anywhere. Like, they stay cold. I think... In the best case scenario over my area, wind chill might be up to about three. And then we'll actually take a look at the winds too in just a minute. But we'll go towards 54 hours out. This is heading into the overnight hours on Saturday. We're back into the negatives around my area. We have Louisville still sitting in the negative teens, borderline negative 20s. And now even the Northeast is getting on the action, getting in on the action at this point. And in scattered pockets around the mountains, we're even seeing negative 30s. One spot even, I just ran over that. That's negative 44. It's just wild. This is stuff that you see in Canada, not here. You might see this maybe in the Dakotas every once in a while. This is rare for them. But to see this going on, this far east, this far south, is unheard of. That's the end of the model run. We're looking at this point. We're looking at uh, Christmas Eve morning. We got temperatures, or we got dew, well, wind chills. Excuse me, still lingering below zero in a lot of places. But it does look like there's a little bit of a warm up starting to happen. After Christmas is when we'll start to break out of this uh, this big cold shot that's coming through, or polar shot. I would really I think would be a better term. But simply put, this weekend is going to be extremely cold, extremely brutal. Like I said, if you don't have to be out, don't go out. If you are going to be out, make sure that you have. Plenty of ways to stay warm. Make sure you're layered up extra tight. And keep the gas in your car in case something crazy were to go down. Let's go ahead and look at the wind chills. We're mainly going to be highlighting the areas that are looking for blizzard conditions. Although my computer wants to do a bunch of other things. But this is what we have going on over these regions right now. We have uh, plenty of wind gusts that look like they're going to be at about 35 miles an hour over this region. We'll expect this coverage to expand, especially into the overnight hours. Yep, and we'll look at the wind speed as well. We're seeing it increasing close to 50 miles an hour in these regions. And this only expands further as we go through Thursday. This is another area that we're expecting blizzard conditions. And we're going to jump this to Friday morning. And you can see that these wind gusts are hitting about 50 miles an hour. There's also going to be a pretty big uh, lake effect event going on here. So uh, just off the lakes, there's going to be some maximized totals. Nothing out of the ordinary. We already kind of expected this. But that's pretty much what we have going there. And then once we run 
into uh, Friday afternoon. We see those uh, strong wind gusts starting to work their way further and further into the northeast. Just off of uh, Lake Erie here, we could see wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour. Blizzard conditions definitely seem possible. So we can still anticipate some opportunity for blizzard warnings to be stretching further and further to the east. Wow, we even have one area here that looks like we're getting up to about 60, 71 miles an hour. Wow, that is wild. And these winds will still be lingering long after the snow stops falling for some areas. This is a really strong low pressure system. It has a lot of vorticity with it. We've looked at the vorticity map a lot earlier on, but this uh, counterclockwise spin, these winds will not be leaving this region through Christmas, really. So just make sure that you're ready for that over here towards the Great Lakes and towards the Northeast. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, precip models here, or the precip model, which is going to be the NAM three kilometer. And interestingly enough, the NAM is kind of giving a little bit of a chance f to the uh, southeast here as well in regards to uh, potential snow. I do think for the most part, though, it's still going to be relatively minute in accumulation. But it'll be an interesting site for that region nonetheless. Over towards the uh, Tennessee and Ohio valleys, it's a pretty good amount of snow here. If you end up getting caught up under a big band, you could see uh, locally higher snowfall totals. And we'll go over the totals in a minute that uh, are anticipated as of right now. Also, one thing to note here is you can see how this trough has uh, been dug out into a negative tilt. You can see how this uh, storm is just pulling almost this warm air into it, so to speak. And that's why we have this little bit of a rain shield right here. But that's also why you're going to see that rapid cool down where some places like around here, for example, are going to see a 40 degree drop within 30 minutes. This is why the storm is so strong. It's literally pulling in what little warm air is left out ahead of it into it. And then it's mixing back in with this cold air here. So we'll roll this forward. This is the time frame where we can see some snow towards the southeast right about here in the early morning hours heading into Friday. It doesn't linger for too long so unless you end up being lucky under a uh, lucky snow van or unlucky depending on uh, your, percep your perception of snow especially in this situation you could get local you could get a locally higher total even then for a lot of these areas I wouldn't re I wouldn't uh, expect too much more than an inch I would say maybe two to four inches as possible around the uh, Tennessee Valley heading into Kentucky. Around the Ohio Valley, you could see about four to six, I would say. And these are just totals off the top of my head. This isn't actually looking at the model, so to speak. But we'll watch the uh, low kind of linger just north of the border here. And this is and with the way the wind is blowing, this is also going to trigger a little bit of a lake effect event. So even in crit. Even uh, on Christmas Day, there's potential for even uh, some snow to still be lingering around the Great Lakes. So if you're just barely on shore, I would expect snow to still be falling and potentially even accumulating. So keep an eye on that if you live in these regions here. But that's the end of the model run here. We're going to do a little comparison here with uh, all the other models so far. The short range models compared to the long range models. Short range models actually have this a little bit stronger, but it also has it moving a little bit more progressively. Whereas our long range models are kind of taking their time having are kind of having this storm system taking their time. So here so this is the NAM three kilometer here at about eighteen hours out. This is the H triple R, about an hour behind that. But you can almost kind of see that it's a little bit further ahead. But it also trends a little further to the south. GFS is a little further to the north. But there's a stronger moisture shield with it. And then the GDPS has a uh, weaker low pressure altogether. 
but it trends further south. Euro has this thing coming to the north super fast. And it's just not out here to play games. So we'll run this to we'll run this an additional six hours and we'll see that this has moved off a little further to the east. Our short range models are a little stronger. HRR in particular is really strong with this one. Moisture shields a little further south of the GFS, nothing unexpected there. GDPS, the Canadian model. The uh, cold air definitely seems to lag a little bit behind the moisture here, but also if you look closely here, this 540 line represents our 32 degree line. And they're still having rain right here, which I kind of find interesting. So there's a little bit of a question mark with that one there. And then last but not least, there's the Euro. The Euro looks a little bit more concrete, but I even see the same thing going on with that. So there's a little bit of a question in regards to in regards to the accuracy of those two models right now. I do find that kind of odd that they have rain on, uh, behind the 540 line, especially considering the fact that we know how cold this air mass is. It's not even a question here. And I don't know why I keep having the soundings pop up right now. I don't know what's going on with this computer. Let's roll this to 30 hours out. I don't know how I keep right clicking when I have my finger only on the left button. And once we get to 30 hours out, snow shield for the NAM, a little bit further south, but not by much. HRRR is looking a little different. This, by this point, the uh, moisture shields moved a little bit further north and it's a little bit faster. Also a stronger system. GFS is retreating to the north a tad. And then the Canadian is doing a weird thing. We'll have to keep an eye on that. I don't think this uh, lends itself towards a good event for the southeast, if at all. And then the Euro. The Euro is doing something a little bit different there. Not by too much. But uh, looks like we start to have a little bit of trouble keeping that moisture as the cold air moves in. So we'll roll this to about 36. By that point, we're starting to get into the Ohio Valley and this is where the most snow will start to come in between that 30 to 36 hour time frame on these models. Pretty much there's extreme model agreement on all of these uh, bringing snow in. GDPS is just doing something weird. I don't know what that is, honestly. But uh, GFS will have this system kind of lingering a little bit more over the Great Lakes, so to speak. And interestingly enough, there's a little section right here where I could even be suspicious of thunder snow. I don't expect a lot of cape to be with this, so I'm very doubtful. No, there isn't any cape, so there's no surprises there. But we'll have to watch closely because uh, if there's a chance of thunder snow and you're watching the Weather Channel, possibly you may see Jim Kent, you may see a, a wild Cantori appearance. But this is pretty much what we have going on at this point now. Once we get to this part of the forecast, it's kind of pretty much set in stone. Really, around here, it's relatively set in stone, but a few places around here could see flurries some places could see maybe even up to half an inch of snow it's a lot there's a lot of uh there's a lot of finer details that i wouldn't really be able to go over here in order to really figure this one out so we'll go to 42 hours out and pretty much finish this out by this point really storm system has begun to linger around the great lakes it's where we'll start to see that wraparound moisture funneling about and mainly increasing the snowfall totals towards the interior northeast. Over towards these regions, we're going to start out as rain and eventually switch over to snow, especially as we get towards Christmas Eve. HRRR at this point has this north of the border. Pretty much all the models will have this north of the border by this point. So there's no real surprise there. Even the uh, RDPS and the uh, original NAM will have this either north of the border or right over the Great Lakes. So one last thing we can look at here 
is our snowfall totals, and we'll use the Cucciera ratio. And we'll jump this all the way to the morning of Christmas Eve just to get an idea of what we have going here. This is what we're looking at so far. We'll start out over towards these regions here. Snowfall totals around this part of the country aren't going to be that impressive, but it's the overall travel conditions that are going to be the highlight here. That plus the uh, cold weather in general. Now, if we look at the NAM over towards uh, Oklahoma City, we could see up to about an inch of snow. When we uh, look over towards Missouri, this is where we start to get into those heavier snowfall totals. There's plenty of places where we could see about four to six inches. Iowa, it's pretty much the same deal. There's a little swath. There's a little swath here towards uh, South Central Nebraska where we could see about four to six inches. Otherwise, we see widespread two to four inches. And it's really not until we get towards the Great Lakes and the UP of Michigan where we start to see our ridiculous snowfall totals where we're getting about two to three feet of snow in some places possible. And then just off the uh, eastern shores of the Great Lakes here, like Lake Michigan, for example, we could see almost two feet of snow there. And then just north of the border, it's a pretty similar deal. The further east you get, once we get past this line here, the snowfalls really start to drop off. Towards the Ohio Valley, we could still see plenty, plenty of uh, spaces where we get about six to eight inches of snow, but it's mainly going to be widespread, uh, four to six inches. Once we get into the Tennessee Valley, widespread two to four, and then once we get into the Appalachians, we could see some locally higher amounts. Once we get towards Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, really anywhere that's south of the uh, of uh, Little Rock here, almost like in a line like this, this is where your snowfall total potential really starts to drop off. Although the NAM does give a shot of snow towards northern Alabama, northern Mississippi, and northern Georgia. So we'll have to watch and see what goes on there. Atlanta, you're not completely out ruled out of this one, but even so issue isn't necessarily going to be snowfall accumulation it's going to be more or less just the overall conditions of the roads because we're going to have rain before this and it's going to freeze and there's going to be a uh, flash freeze as it's called really where the temperature is going to drop so rapidly the roads aren't going to really cool off and the potential for uh, roads bridges in particular to freeze over and that's what's going to be really treacherous we look at the GFS here, it's a little less gracious towards the southeast, but more gracious towards where that low is going to be circulating more. But overall, the totals aren't going to be too dissimilar. Look at the GDPS, it's pretty much a similar look. Maybe a little uh, more conservative on the totals here. And then uh, the Euro isn't too much different. Snowfall totals are kind of leaning a little more towards the north. Like I said, really, if you're anywhere to the south of Little Rock, you're not Little Rock, Arkansas, you're not going to be expecting much snow. Hate to say it. But that's pretty much all we have here. I'm going to try to see if there's any other model I could look at. Looks like no. I was trying to see if the blender models would somehow pop up, but that doesn't look to be the case. But anyway, that's it for this video here. If you liked what I did here, definitely drop me a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, as almost 84% of you or more haven't subscribed to this channel yet. Especially if you're tuning in to watch the videos. I do stuff like this all the time, especially for the bigger storm systems. So, what does it hurt? It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I do respond especially if you're respectful. But that being said, this has been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good night, and again, stay warm.